Imagine a world where your phone, your car, your fridge, your watch, even your washing machine all speak the same language, seamlessly, instantly, and without you lifting a finger. That's not science fiction. It's happening right now. And it's not from Apple or Google. Today, we're pulling back the curtain on Harmony OS, Huawei's audacious operating system that wants to turn billions of scattered devices into a single, intelligent, seamless experience. This video explains how Harmony OS works, why its super device vision matters, the exact advantages it offers over Apple and Google, and the geopolitical, technical, and commercial traps that could stop it. Stick around. There's one scenario at the end that shows how Harmony OS could actually beat the incumbents, and it's worth the wait. From crisis to ambition. In 2019, Huawei faced a shock that forced a strategic rethink. Restricted access to Google's software stack. Instead of surrendering market share, Huawei accelerated an internal project that had been simmering for years. The result is Harmony OS. Not an Android fork, not a Me Too mobile system, but a microkernel based platform engineered for distribution and modularity. A microkernel approach means the core part of the OS is tiny and secure. Most device specific functionality runs in separate modules or runtimes that can be deployed independently. This design is more flexible and easier to certify for safety-critical devices, like cars or industrial controllers. It's an architecture that naturally lends itself to the idea of devices cooperating instead of competing for resources. Distributed architecture. To picture Harmony OS's distributed model, imagine a virtual bus that any certified device can join. On this bus, Services such as audio output, sensing, display rendering, and data storage are addressable resources. The OS handles service discovery, permission negotiation, and dynamic reassignment of responsibilities. Technically, this means service discovery. Devices announce their capabilities using a standardized descriptor. Other devices can discover those capabilities in milliseconds. Distributed scheduling. Tasks can be moved to less loaded devices. Heavy rendering for a game might offload from a smartwatch to a nearby tablet. Secure sandboxes. Even when services are distributed, code runs in isolated environments with clear capability-based permissions. The microkernel mediates hardware access. Unified communication layer. Instead of pairing step-by-step, -step, Harmony OS can use a single session concept that spans Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and local mesh networks to keep latency low and handoff seamless. This is not trivial engineering. It requires low-level OS work, network protocol optimization, and strong developer tooling so apps can take advantage of multi-device features without extra complexity. A new user experience super device is Harmony OS's user-facing promise, devices that compose and recompose themselves into larger, logical units. Here's a scenario to bring it to life. Morning routine scene. You wake, your smartwatch senses your sleep stage and nudges an alarm to the bedside speaker. Your coffee machine starts because your calendar shows a meeting. Your mirror shows the weather and commute ETA. You walk to your car. It recognizes your profile, preloads your playlist, and sets cabin temperature based on your calendar location. Your home energy manager reduces climate control to eco mode because the car is leaving. The UX goal here is the disappearance of friction. No pairing UI, no connect dialogue, just devices behaving like a single organism. Network effects and lock-in platforms win when users, developers, and manufacturers coalesce into mutually reinforcing networks. Apple wins on tight integration, polished developer tools, and premium hardware economics. Google wins on reach and openness. Harmony OS 
is attempting a hybrid, the integration depth of a closed system with an open invite to hardware partners. This suggests two vectors of lock-in, functional stickiness. Devices that coordinate reduce the marginal benefit of replacing one element with an incompatible product. Developer investment. Apps that leverage distributed capabilities become meaningfully better on Harmony OS, encouraging developers to prioritize it. Where Harmony OS lives today, Huawei has put Harmony OS into areas where it can reach huge numbers of endpoints. Smart TVs, routers, smart speakers, home appliances, wearables, and select car cockpits. Partnerships with appliance makers and automakers mean Harmony OS sits in places where people interact with Connect. The smartphone is no longer the only lever. If Harmony OS becomes the default software on a family's TV set-top fridge and car, that family will experience consistent value from adding another Harmony-enabled device, even if their phone isn't Huawei branded. Geopolitics and the global app problem, Harmony OS faces three existential challenges. One, Trade restrictions limit Huawei's direct market expansion in several countries, reducing device availability and partnership velocity. 2. Users choose ecosystems for apps, not OS specs. Convincing developers to target a new platform requires demonstrating a sizable user base and monetization potential. 3. Privacy concerns and geopolitical suspicion are durable, Technical guarantees help, but perception and legal frameworks matter as much as code. Huawei's multi-pronged expansion strategy. To overcome these barriers, IoT first invasion. Instead of displacing iPhones or Androids directly, Harmony OS can grow by dominating non-phone categories. Smart displays, routers, set-top boxes, appliances, and budget wearables in emerging markets. These devices are the first connected touchpoint for many consumers. Automotive integration. Cars are big, sticky devices. Harmony OS for Smart Cockpit can make the car a mobile node of your home network. Automakers like vertical integration because it reduces fragmentation across telematics, infotainment, and clusters. Harmony OS offers a single stack. Developer incentives and tooling Huawei invested in compilers and frameworks to ease porting from Android and to build native multi-device apps. Grants App Store promotions and revenue share advantages are part of the playbook. Carrier and OEM partnerships. In many regions, carriers and OEMs decide pre-install stacks. Huawei can partner with telcos and local OEMs in markets that value low cost or reduced Google dependency accelerating distribution. Monetizing scale and OS doesn't need to sell phones to make money. Harmony OS can monetize via App Store fees, cloud services like Sync and AI Offload, device certification and support aggregated, consented data services, and automotive subscriptions for maps and features. The size of these streams hinges on trust and daily engagement. Recurring value is the key. The developer and compatibility tightrope. Harmony OS must be easy to adopt. Huawei's strategy includes backward compatibility with Android apps where feasible. Native APIs for distributed features that offer real benefits. Cross-device testing tools and transparent privacy permission models but developers allocate time by expected revenue and user reach. Harmony OS must move that needle. The tipping point scenarios. There are three credible tipping points. Organic appliance plus car growth. Harmony OS reaches critical mass in homes and vehicles. Users experience material benefits and start preferring Harmony-enabled products. Developer surge. A small set of exclusive distributed first apps become must-haves, pushing user demand and developer interest. Policy shift. 
geopolitical or regulatory changes enable faster global distribution and OEM partnerships. If any of these happen at scale, the network effects could accelerate adoption rapidly, turning Harmony OS from a regional giant into a global alternative. Risks, countermoves, and the industry response. Apple can tighten continuity, bundle services more aggressively, and sharpen its privacy positioning. Google can standardize cross-device APIs and optimize Android for lower latency and better device handoff. Chip vendors could prioritize silicon that favors particular stacks, and regulation remains a wild card, either a break or a catalyst. Deep dive, security, privacy, and trust. Security matters most when devices share control. A microkernel reduces attack surface and eases certification for cars and industrial devices. But governance and transparency matter too. Will Harmony OS publish independent audits and allow third-party attestation? In practice, convincing privacy-sensitive markets will require both robust technical controls and public verifiable governance. A human story. The family that stops swearing at tech. Imagine a household, a working parent, a teenager, and a grandparent. Today, tech is a battleground, pairing, passwords, and incompatible apps. With Harmony OS, devices cooperate. Clinic schedules trigger pill dispenser reminders for the grandparent. The teenager's stream moves to the TV when friends arrive. The parent's calendar sets home climate and driving routes automatically. Devices become a team. That change isn't merely convenient. It reshapes how families spend money on upgrades. If compatibility matters, buying more Harmony devices becomes rational. A timeline. Short-term to long-term. Short-term, 12 to 24 months. Deeper adoption in China and select emerging markets. More appliance and automotive integrations. Aggressive developer incentives. Medium-term two to four years. Potential OEM pre-installs outside China where permitted. A few showcase apps that highlight distributed capabilities. Long-term, four plus years. Either Harmony OS becomes a regional dominant force shaping standards or a credible global third option that forces Apple and Google to rethink device orchestration. Achieving the latter, requires geopolitical shifts and sustained commercial momentum. This, the operating layer under our devices, still matters. Whoever controls it shapes how we live with technology.